Good evening and welcome to this meeting of the Arlington Board of Selectmen. We're meeting on March 26, 2018, 7.15 p.m. the Selectmen's Chambers, second floor of Town Hall, uh, 830 Mass Ave, Arlington, Massachusetts. I am uh, Joe Curo. I am joined by our Vice Chair, Kevin Greeley, and my colleagues, uh, Diane Mahan, Clarissa Rowe, and uh, Dan Dunn. And we are assisted in our work by um, uh, our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine, town council, Doug Heim, and our staff assistant, Ashley Marr. Um, <clears throat> I think you all know that I, I, I often like to start the, uh, the meetings with an inspirational, something inspirational, or something a little different this, tonight. Um, but the past quite a few years, I've been on a quest for an elusive white whale, which many of you have assisted with um, in this, this quest. And I am happy to say that yesterday I represented the board on a team of <coughs> local elected officials, including uh, Jennifer Seuss from the school committee and our esteemed treasurer and uh, collector of taxes, Dean Carmen, at the Arlington Education Foundation Trivia B. We had a record 32 teams. And I am happy to report that we brought home the gold. <laughs> And we have the trophy is on its world tour. It's on its second stop. Nice. Mr. Carmen had it down in his office. Um, he ran it up so that we could display it to, to, tonight in our office. And it is going to make a trip across the avenue to the school committee on Thursday night. So I want to thank you all for the quest. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, we also got honorable mention for our costumes, which I will let you look up online. Over the six years I've been on this board, I've worn a lot of really silly costumes, and uh, this was by far by the hard. silliest. Yes. So we'll let you look that up on your own. You can find your way to that. So, so Mr. Chairman, which yes, team did you enjoy more? The year you, Adam, and I were on a team and did not make it through the first round? <laughs> or this team? Well, I will say that that year we had plenty of extra time to go enjoy a refreshing <laughs> beverage. Uh, what about, the, Mr. Greeley, what about the year that you and I and Ms. Rowe were on a team and also didn't finish the we, first yes. round? There was some common denominator. I don't know. I don't see it. So I, I just said, Carmen brings karma, and we, we, uh, we, we pulled it off, and I think... I think they raised over $23,000. There was a lot of generous um, local Arlington uh, right. businesses that sponsored as well as the entrance. So thank you. Have a little bit, of fun. A little bit of fun with that. And I think that goes to Fox Library. <laughs> so <laughs> with no further ado, we will uh, start out on our agenda. We have our um, report from the uh, Community Preservation Committee, which was uh, tabled from last meeting. And uh, representing this, the uh, CPC <laughs> is Andrew Banks, uh, Bankson. The, uh, the vice chair of the committee. Mr. Bankson. Thanks. Uh, tough act to follow there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so good evening. I'm Andrew Bankson, vice chair of the Community Preservation Committee. I'm here to present the projects that we, as uh, the committee, will be recommending to annual town meeting this spring. As a representative of the committee, I'm asking for your vote of endorsement on the budget you have before you. Going to jump into the FY19 budget and projects, but if you have any questions about how the CPA works here in Arlington, about the committee, past projects, et cetera, I'd be happy to answer those questions afterwards. Six projects I'll present here were uh, submitted last fall and have been vetted carefully and thoroughly by the committee over several months, including public presentations by the project sponsors at the end of January, uh, which both uh, Joe Kiro and, and Clarissa Rowe attended. First page of the PDF you have in front of you is the FY19 budget. The top table shows the funds available for FY19 comprised of the pro uh, projected revenues from the local tax surcharge and the state match, along with previous fiscal year's surpluses and remaining balances. The bottom line for FY19 is that we have a little under 2.35 million available to fund approved projects and administrative expenses. The bottom table shows the funding we are asking town meeting to appropriate for the six projects. We'll go over each of these projects in a minute, uh, but staying on the administrative expenses, we will again be asking for 5% of the projected <coughs> revenues, about $80,000, primarily used to cover a portion of the salary of two town employees uh, that are critical to the committee's success. 
Uh, it also covers any unusual expenses in vetting or overseeing the uh, projects. Any un unspent administrative expenses returned to the fund at the end of the fiscal year. You can see at the bottom of the table that we'll be asking town meeting to approve just under $2 million for the projects and the uh, administrative expenses, leaving about $400,000 in the fund for the future. Second page is a map of Arlington showing where the six projects are located. Uh, you can see uh, this year we have projects stretching right across town. And for, um, for annual town meeting, we'll also have a more comprehensive map or a, a map showing all the past projects and this year's projects. So the third and fourth project, uh, pages contain the projects. A quick reminder that the CPA projects must fall into one of three categories, community or affordable housing, historic preservation, or uh, recreation and open space, and they must adhere to the allowable uses within those categories. So uh, please feel free to ask questions about the projects either while I'm speaking to them or afterwards. So the first project is a study and construction documents for a new playground at Hardy Elementary for $39,500. Hardy is expanding out towards Chandler Street into the space of the current playground. This project is um, just for that back area to be redesigned. Actual construction is, for, uh, is in the FY20 capital plan with a placeholder of $300,000 and, um, and, and the construction would likely occur in the summer of 2019, so after um, July 1st of 2019. There's a separate playground project not funded by CPA along Lake Street for the kindergarten through K2, uh, sorry, through grade two and that would happen this summer. <coughs> That's in the FY19 capital plan for $200,000. Second project is for the continued restoration of the Jason Russell House uh, for $72,000. This work follows the recommendations set out in the Comprehensive Conditions Assessment and Preservation Plan uh, funded by C uh, CPA in FY17. The project involves structural repair, envelope restoration, and uh, sprinkler and electrical upgrades. Third project is for 48 units of affordable housing spread over two sites. The Downing Square site has a six unit building on the Park Avenue extension and a larger 28 unit building along the bikeway in the back. The Broadway site will have 14 units set above two retail spaces, one of which will be, will be reserved for the Arlington Food Pantry. $500,000 in CPA funds this fiscal year, uh, or uh, FY19, would be added to the $100,000 approved last year, $600,000 total, and would be earmarked for construction expenses only. The total project cost is $19.2 million. Depending on state DHCD approval, uh, uh, Department of Housing and Community Development uh, approval, these units could be ready by 2020 and fully occupied by the spring of 2021. The fourth project is for phase two of the Millbrook Linear Park in Wellington Park, building on phase one pilot study, which is currently taking place. The next public meeting is on Saturday, April 14th, um, outside at the park. The project for just under $173,000 includes additional public outreach involves further environmental assessment of the Millbrook and culminates in construction documents for the town-owned portion of the project site. The fifth project is for exterior envelope repair and restoration at the Old Schwamm Mill for $82,000. Like the work at the Jason Russell House, the work here would adhere to the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and would also have a preservation architect overseeing it. The sixth and final project is for the design <coughs> and engineering and phase one construction at the reservoir. The master plan funded by an earlier CPA appropriation is in its final stages. Uh, next Wednesday, April 3rd, there's a presentation on the project at the Senior Center. This project's primary focus is to replace the pump equipment for the bathing beach, which is in a dire state of repair. Pump house would also be gut renovated. The construction would happen next spring, 2019. Also included is a pilot project for the perimeter trail improvements. Though phase two hasn't been uh, finalized, uh, the total project cost, including both phases, is 
currently is estimated to be just under $4 million. So that concludes the project descriptions. Um, we are one of three entities uh, that make recommendations for appropriations directly to town meeting. That includes you, the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Finance Committee, and uh, the Community Preservation Committee. We have presented to Finance Committee, uh, the Capital Planning Committee, and this is the last stop before we go to town meeting. Uh, we welcome your questions and comments and hope for a vote of endorsement. Thank you for uh, taking the time to have us come in and present to you. Thank you very much for the excellent, concise uh, presentation. And I'm, I'm glad you ended on that note. I was going to remind just my colleagues, but more for the uh, public here and, and watching at home, that when this board brought forward the, the CPA to town meeting, then later to the, the voters, we had uh, agreed on this type of a consultation where the um, uh, Community Preservation Committee would, even though you do report directly to town meeting for approval, would consult with the FinCom and the Capital Planning and the Board. So I really appreciate you coming in and, and uh, sharing this with us uh, and asking for our endorsement. So with that, do any of my colleagues have questions or comments on the presentation by Mr. Bengtson? Mr. Dunn. Uh, Finance Committee and uh, Capital Planning, did they take votes? Um, I'm aware of the uh, Finance Committee, and I believe that was unanimous. Um, I can't recall the uh, Capital Planning. Thank you. I can't with 100% confidence they voted, but I know they've been working in close collaboration, so I'd be surprised if it wasn't approved. Great, thank you. My other Mr. Greeley. Yeah, uh, great presentation, thanks, good work. The, uh, I'm just curious on the reservoir design, the trail improvements, only for the part of the trail in Arlington, I assume, right? Isn't like three quarters of that actually Lexington? The trail? Um, Right, the trail goes around the around the, um, the reservoir. Actually, uh, I think Arlington owns, or um, I, uh, it, it's under the control, the trail is under the control of Arlington, at, even if it, as it goes into Lexington. So um, the project would be for the entirety of the trail around the reservoir. And that would become then a, a walking trail? That's, yeah, uh, yeah nice. it's, uh, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be, um, uh, I think it's going to be fully ADA accessible, or I, I think that's the idea. Yeah. Uh, the pilot project is um, is for that uh, purpose as well to test it out. Uh, so there's going to be a small pilot uh, done, um, uh, and it's going to have include uh, new um, paving. It's called Flexi Pave. It's a type of um, kind of uh, uh, surface that you can walk on, uh, roll on, and um, and it's going to lo also look at all of the um, all the routes and you know try to make it accessible. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. And before I recognize Mr. Lahan, I'll just uh, note also that 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 trail is also used as the running course for the Arlington High School cross country teams. Mr. Hyde was in the audience. Our daughters run together uh, on that team, so it is important. Oh, it for, is good for, for that good. use as well. Ms. Mahan. Um, first, I'd like to move approval. Yeah. Move approval. And, and I'd like to second Ms. Rose's uh, motion. <laughs> and I am thrilled uh, that uh, the Hardy School, I know it's called Playground. I'm 55. I went to Hardy School, and we had that asphalt playground. And it's just always baffled me that all these years later, it's still concrete, asphalt. Um, um, so I'm so thrilled that you're doing that. That is so overdue. And um, I do know your committee, along with um, Kate Leary and some others from Hardy School are working really hard on that as well as incorporating, um, you know, the treescape down there. So, um, and I think that's really fantastic that that's happening. It's, it's so long overdue and um, I'm thrilled by that and I'm happy to second Ms. Rose's motion. Thank you. Um, do I have anything to say? Well, no. No. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful report. I happen to sit on that committee for quite a, most of the year. so. I'm, I'm in full support, and my neighborhood at the Hardy School is incredibly excited about it. So I, I, from my first selectman's meeting this year, I got home, and it was probably 10.30, and one of my neighbors, who is very energetic, came running up to me and he said, I want to talk to you about the playground. <laughs> I said, could it be tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> and he's still very enthusiastic. Whenever I was walking my dog yesterday, he was telling me about it. So it's, it's the neighborhood's really, really pleased. So thank, thank 
Thank you, the committee. <laughs> Yes, th th thank you very much. Um, I also want to note that uh, I appreciate the um, affordable housing initiative that you're supporting, which of course um, this board has also supported through CDBG funding. So I think leveraging those various sources of funds is, is uh, a really effective approach to increasing the affordable yeah. housing stock in the town. So we'd and, like seeing that. <laughs> um, our good chair of the committee, Eric, was very sorry to miss this presentation, but. He, he pulled his back out and he's in Chicago, mm. but he knew that Andrew would d be stellar at his presenting everything. And he was right. And the only thing that we didn't get, Andrew, <coughs> is that when we saw the map, your red dots didn't come up. Yeah, on. I was trying yeah. to find that. What, the red dots didn't show up? No, no. it's very, uh, it I did. can. I think right. we know most of the locations. Thank God gonna, you said that. I'm he, colorblind. I was going to say, he wouldn't know either. And I've been trying to figure way. out where the hell it was. <laughs> it was there last week. Someone. But it's not there this week. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be because the PDF renderer in our okay. packet it's actually. I, I, well, okay. th they hate each other. PDF, PDF renderers all hate each other. Yeah. So the chairman got his white whale. You lost your red dots. So. <laughs> 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 On that, sorry. Very good. You'll, you'll see it at town meeting. <laughs> Excellent. So on a motion by Ms. Rowe and seconded by Ms. Mahan. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very much. It's unanimous. Thank, thank, thank you very much for all your work on this and for pinch hitting for uh, just the helmet. Thank you. We now move on to the um, <clears throat> uh, consent agenda. Um, the, these items are uh, typically approved by a single vote and uh, limited discussion. First, we have uh, Farmer's Market 2018, Patsy Kramer, Market Manager, and for approval, Memorandum of Agreement. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry, this yeah. is not a consent no. agenda. I, ap I apologize. For approval, Farmer's Market 2018, Patsy Kramer, Market Manager. Thank you. Oh, I just want you almost to got it really <laughs> easy, Patsy. Yeah, right. Well, I just want to officially add a request permission for the Farmer's Market to again be at the Russell Common parking lot. This would be our 21st year as a Farmer's Market, and in the face of many markets really struggling and losing participation, our market continues to hold its own and really do quite well. The Arlington community is a lot of good cookers and people that want really wonderful fresh food and, and come to the market. This year, um, we have two new vendors. One is a commercial mushroom grower and the second is a hard cider producer and they will also be requesting an official alcohol permit from you like the <coughs> vendor does. So we hope everybody in Arlington will come and get wonderful corn and apples and peaches and vegetables and eat very healthy. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions, comments? Move approval. There's a motion second. by Ms. Mahan, second by Mr. Grilly. I would only note, um, you put a note in here about the uh, parking meters and they seem to be working well very for well. you. Very yes. well, yes. yes. Excellent, excellent. Okay, on a, on a, move by, uh, a motion by Ms. Mahan, second by Mr. Grilly. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very, very much. much, and thank you thank for keeping that Thanks, going. Thanks, Patsy. Now move on to item number three Wait. for approval. Mr. Chair, yes. can I uh, respectfully uh, suggest you consider taking up the Human Rights Commission appointment? I see Kristen Bauer was here. It's number nine. I, well, there'll be a lot to go through uh, awaiting that appointment. Certainly. Hearing no objection, we will take up number nine, Human Rights Commission, Kristen Bauer, term to expire 131-2021, table from the 319 meeting. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Please, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve on the Human Rights Commission. Sure. I've been serving overseas for the State Department uh, for almost 30 years, working on human rights issues. I uh, recently returned to Arlington, very pleased to be back in this town and actually very excited to be here to hear this part of the meeting. And I wanted to give something back and serve the town and I felt with my experience and background in that area, I would have something to contribute. Thank you very much. Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you very much for volunteering. And so I was reading through my packet and I made it down to the bottom of the first page and it said, uh, the U.S. Embassy Rangoon, Burma, Deputy Chief of Mission, two years. And I said, wow, that's fascinating. I'm gonna have something to ask her about at the meeting tonight. And then I made it to the next page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, well, we could be here for a long time. Uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, uh, Surabaya, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, um, like there's just a 
like I'm fascinated by your career, and I'm really thank you for bringing it to, back here to Arlington. That's my great pleasure. Move approval. <laughs> Moved by Mr. Dunn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Rowe. And I, I just want to say the same thing. We're very sorry that everybody's leaving the State Department, but it's our gain. <laughs> and I think that you'll probably find our human rights issues very similar to the ones that you dealt with. People are the same everywhere. Yes, I think so. Thank you for serving. And I'll just say I was also blown away by the, by the resume. I was t I've, I've already, t I hope you don't mind, I've already told a few folks in town who are interested in, in, in uh, human rights issues and have studied in Indonesia and everything. So you oh, got to see great. this commission that we've got coming in. So, <laughs> so I want a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Ms. Rowe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very much Thank for you. stepping up, Thank sir. You. We nice really appreciate it. Um, okay, we will go back now to item number three on the agenda. And thank you for flagging that, Mr. Chaplain. Uh, for approval, memorandum of agreement, Douglas Bike Share, Adam W. Chaplain, Town Manager, Nat Strasburg, Senior Planner, MAPC Staff, and Wine Bike. Great. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction and turn it over to uh, turn it over to the team. Uh, so just to to bring the board and the public uh, up to where we are. So the board recalls. Um, I can't recall now actually if it was late last year or earlier this year, but we talked about uh, dockless bike share, uh, new technology, uh, sort of a competing technology with a dock-based hubway system, and <clears throat> we came here before the board, talked about it. Doug had put together, working with the planning department, some draft regulations, and um, simultaneously the MAPC was saying they would put together a regional procurement for dockless bike share. So at that point we said this looks to be worth further investigation. Uh, don't want to say absolutely no to Hubway or the dock-based system, but let's pursue this dockless system and be part of the regional procurement. So that's what we did. Uh, Nat and the planning department uh, have been working over the past couple months on this regional procurement. Simultaneously, Nat and members of ABAC have been helping us, uh, and the Bike Share Working Group have been helping us take, uh, continue to look at Hubway, which is actually now officially called Blue Bikes with the new title sponsor. And where we have ended up, is coming here tonight to recommend that we uh, ask the board to uh, authorize me to sign the MOA for the regional procurement for dockless bike share, um, contingent upon the board further approving dockless bike share regulations, which we'll bring back at, a, if not the next meeting, the meeting after. Uh, but just a little bit on Hubway or Blue Bikes. We had, I think now two or three weeks ago, one final conversation with Motivate, the operating company uh, for Hubway. And at, coming out of that meeting, they gave us three further refined uh, cost possibilities with, in my mind, the best cost possibility being zero operating costs, but still uh, a minimum $250,000 capital investment <coughs> for the purchase and installation of mm -hmm. the dockless bike system. Um, on top of that, it, when we had that discussion, it had not been announced that it was Blue Bikes yet, and then that was announced. Uh, that's what's called the title sponsor that provides a significant amount of revenue to the existing system. And I will maybe speak as in frustrated tones as I ever do in this chamber. It has continued to just dramatically frustrate me that neither Motivate, Hubway, or Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, or Brookline have any willingness to share any of that title sponsorship revenue for the expansion of the network. Uh, it's fully for the benefit of the existing system, zero, zero dollars for the expansion of the system, even though they would be marked as blue bikes and be getting the attention that they would get in Arlington, which I have a significant problem with. Um, still not to say we would never look at it, but I think in its current model, having the Arlington taxpayers facing everything that they're facing over the next few years, basically contributing to somebody's for-profit business model um, would be very troublesome, uh, again, to me. So with that, um, I wanna, we want to tell you a little bit about the, the good things that we think Dockless, uh, Dockless Bike Share will be able to bring to the table. We have one of the bikes here uh, tonight from Lime, uh, Lime Bike, and then we eventually will be asking you to endorse my signing of the MOA. So I guess with that, if uh, you'll indulge Nat to come up and talk a little bit about the process. Do you want to bring the bike in so it can be on television? You have to. Are you staging it? Maybe the, you're gonna, yeah. Mr. Strasburg, come on up. Adam, thank you. Members of the board, good evening. Um, I'm really excited to be here tonight. Um, over a year and a half ago, 
Arlington's <coughs> Bike Share Working Group began examining opportunities for bringing bike share to Arlington, as, as Adam discussed. And the working group has grown into a robust team that includes representatives from ABAC, from the, trans, um, the Bicycle Advisory Committee, the Transportation Advisory Committee, East Arlington Livable Streets, the Department of Planning <coughs> and Community Development, the DPW, other town departments as well. And overall, the group has examined various bike share options, again, from an expansion of Hubway to most recently dockless um, bike share. And over the past several months, Arlington and many neighboring communities have been approached by a number of dockless bike share companies. And dockless bike share is certainly a burgeoning market, and there are numerous companies that are vying for a share of, of this market. And it's really, it's really fantastic that our regional planning organization, MAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, has, they've been working very hard to get ahead of the curve. And they recently established an initiative to create a regional no-cost dockless bike share system to ensure that dockless bike share grows in an organized, publicly accountable manner consistent with the best interests of each community. Now, the bike share working group has been critically examining and pursuing this no-cost route and has collaborated We've been collaborating with MAPC in its development. And several neighboring communities are considering joining the regional system. In fact, they're all at different points in, in the process. And I'm just going to go through them very quickly because it's really impressive. Um, Bedford, Belmont, Chelsea, Everett, Lexington, Malden, Medford, Melrose, Milton, Needham, Newton, Revere, Waltham, Watertown, and Winthrop. Um, so this is, this is very, a, a very exciting thing. And what excites me most about this regional approach is that it's incredibly proactive and truly cutting edge. It hasn't been done anywhere else in the country. And it gives Arlington and the region in general a vital opportunity to lead the way. And um, I just want to thank um, Scott Mullen of, of Lime Bike, one of the vendors chosen to operate in this regional system, for joining us here this evening. And he is here um, to answer questions, so we're very thankful um, that he is joining us. And I would like to now call up um, Margie Weinberger, um, who is the senior counsel with MAPC, uh, who has generously taken the time to join us this evening, and who will provide an overview of how the system is coming together, the process for joining the system, and other key information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Strasburg. Ms. Weinberg. Thank you, Nat. Not a podium, yeah. so that would have been much worse for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, I want to thank Nat for his tireless energy and enthusiasm for bike um, ridership and for promoting new modes of transportation that are not alternative modes but are in fact true work workaday modes for transportation that are green and give people new opportunities. So MAPC has taken the leadership role, um, as we are taught to do, to um, Bring dockless bike share as a regional system. As Nat indicated, uh, dockless bike share companies have been knocking on everyone's door. The problem with the approach of everyone doing their own thing is that you don't have a regional approach. As people cross borders, there's no way of monitoring how things are working. There are no guarantees of rebalancing of bikes. We've seen how bike share has worked in other countries, and we've seen it fail. This is not that system. This is the system that will succeed because we believe in recognizing the uniqueness of each community, but having centralized control and obligations of the vendor. We did a very rigorous procurement. The problem with trailblazing means that you are making stuff up. But what we did is we took the best of what the law offers us in 30B, and we conducted a collective procurement as we are allowed to do so under law. And then 16 named communities are entitled to work with us at MAPC to have this regionalized system. MAPC holds the master contract. That contract is, I believe, has been provided to you before, but town council has taken a look at it as well. And we hold the contract, and we are there to enforce the contract. This is something somewhat different than what's happening in other communities. As a centralized regional planning organization, we're there to make sure that the contractual obligations are met and the program succeeds. 
So we are a third party neutral, overseeing the process and making sure that it is successful and monitoring it and adjusting to it as needed because there are gonna be a lot of lessons learned as we go forward. The MOA that we're asking for you to approve today to uh, allow your town manager to sign on to is really the crux of how this works. The 16 communities are all being asked to sign the same document, which in essence says we will work together with the two selected vendors from the procurement. We will have an exclusive relationship with them as our dockless bike share vendor that we will take advantage of the best of the best because we had nine bids. And I have to tell you, the two bidders that we have, Lime Bike and Spin, stood head and shoulders above and it made it an easier selection because of it. So you're going to get the best in class and you're gonna get oversight by MAPC. And I ask that you authorize your town manager to enter into the MOU because that's how this works, by working as a community together by working with your brother and sister communities to make sure that this works for you. <coughs> this is not China where things will be littered with bikes. This is an organized, careful system where we make sure that bikes are rebalanced every day. The communities decide the number of bikes that work with them in tandem and in conjunction with the vendors. Where communities decide what makes them unique and how they can work as partners with that. So I hope that you will authorize your town uh, manager to sign the MOU. I'm happy to take any questions regarding the contract. We've also provided a scope of work as a template to try and make life easier so that each community has a template to work off of to start uh, rollout <coughs> of the system <coughs> and that we have some uniformity in how we do things. Failure to act regionally will mean that everybody's doing something different and there's no control over it and you will have sidewalks littered with bikes. Despite what is tremendous technology that the vendors are bringing to the table, it takes people to organize it and make it work. So I hope that you'll work with us on that. Thank you very much, Ms. Weinberger. Before I recognize Mr. Mullen, are there any questions for Ms. Weinberger or Mr. Dunn? Uh, what in, how does it work if other towns want to uh, come in? Well, the law doesn't allow other towns to come into this procurement. The law says under Chapter 7, uh, Section 22B, that under a collective procurement, MAPC essentially acts as the master contract holder. However, our hope is that other cities and towns will see the benefit of this. We're <coughs> creating a, a trailblazing path that I think we already know other communities who are interested. They've already said so. We're happy to share with them how to procure this. We have recommendations as to how they can consider moving forward, you know, in partnership with the kinds of things we're doing. But they can't join into this procurement on this contract. Hmm. But that doesn't mean they don't have options moving forward. And when, would there be an opportunity to like revise the, the membership at, a, in, at some interval in the future, like after a year or something? Fortunately, as the law is written, and I didn't write it, uh, it's incredibly limited on a collective procurement. Who can participate? Only those named uh, members of the procurement can join, and that's the 16 communities. But I think you're going to find that this becomes, you know, circles around the state. Once it is successful, we're going to see regions expand and want to build on this because it is a very thoughtful way of approaching bike ridership. Thank you. Okay. Another question. Okay. Ms. Mahan. Sort of parallel to um, Mr. Dunn's questions. Um, is there any, um, ca not causative effect, is there any effect or impact if for some reason the preset, I think you said 16 communities, if one or some of them, um, for some reason, their boards of selectmen or city councils choose not to authorize their town manager or city manager to sign in, does that affect this agreement? In this a agreement negative will stand regardless. I mean, you will stand on your own, on your own here in Arlington. Our hope is, and our understanding is from all of those we worked with, that the 16 communities are going to join. They're all in different parts of their uh, town meetings as well. We've had, I think, five at this point sign on to the agreement. Legal councils have been very generous with their time. Town councils have done so. I feel very positive that this has given us a new opportunity to work as partners. I don't think you're going to see many people fall off. Um, I'm very lucky because I work for the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. So I know that the, the governor has put in a tremendous amount of money for bike paths um, in his recent environmental bond bill. So I think 
and um, there's some new bike paths going through some of the <coughs> communities that you mentioned. So I think this is, I completely agree with you, it's gonna be a, a real asset for communities like the Gateway Cities that um, people may not have their own bikes. And I, um, I'm working on another trail out in Lemonster and Fitchburg. And one time I looked over and there was a man who had made himself a bike out of wood parts <laughs> and, and two wheels. So I think that this gives, gives people another option. I like the green too. Well, I think we'll be able to have Kyle uh, show you the bike. I've recommended his council that you don't ride around the building. Uh, <laughs> that would not be a safe uh, opportunity for you to do so. I appreciate your support of this. I think this creates new ridership opportunities and leverages those who are already interested. But this will bring more people to bike ridership, myself included. So thank you. Really? Yeah. Uh, thank you for your great work on this. And I think I understand this, but you said rebalanced daily, yes. meaning community A won't have a thousand bikes while community B has ten. Is that is that what that means? Communities are all deciding with the vendor based on their experience what the right number of bikes will be, and that'll be adjusted over time. And ridership data, a lot of data is going to be collected on this that will inform us on how to move forward. And every day, the bikes will be rebalanced so that the proper number of bikes for each community is put back in its own community. So Arlington won't get everybody's bikes. Arlington will get Arlington's bikes at the end of the day. This is a huge investment by the vendors. I don't, I don't want us to forget that. They're putting their time, their effort, and their money to fronting this. That's what makes this a different system. The effort and the funds are on the vendor to make this work. That gives a huge amount of incentive for them to work with us, to work fairly, and to make sure that we don't suffer some of the errors that other areas have had to go through. Thank you. Thank you very so much. So could I ask just sure. one more? So, so does it also mean if I uh, have a bike in Arlington, I can only take it into those 16 communities? I couldn't take it into... Well, we don't have border wars, okay. um, so we really can't prevent you from going into other communities. And we fully expect that. And we will have centralized communication so that other uh, communities who do not want to have their bikes, that these bikes staying in their, in their areas, will be able to have them removed in a very timely manner so that there is communication that way. But no, we can't stop people at the border so well. Okay. Um. You, I presume you're tied into a, a smartphone app. Part of it is for a smartphone app, but it isn't solely for that. For equity purposes, there are other opportunities for people to use computers, to use a cash. They're going to be working with the local vendors so that we make sure that there is equal opportunity and access to bikes, <clears throat> regardless of your banking situation. Okay. Uh, maybe my next question then is, is maybe more appropriately to Mr. Mullen. So does anybody else have questions for... Ms. Weinberger, thank you very much. Thank for you for letting me come today. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Mullen. You just identify yourself. Hi, my name is Scott Mullen. I'm from Lime Bike, Director of Expansion in the Northeast. Um, Margie can handle all the contractual stuff. That's not my forte. I, I deal with the moving and the, and the fixing of bicycles. So. Does that mean you're going to bring this in so the cameras can see it? Would you like me to? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You have people breathless at home. We keep talking <laughs> yeah, yeah. about this bike and yeah, we can't on, see it. There we go. That's right. The senior member of the board should uh, yeah. be the Vanna White. Yeah. Very nice. So that's the disabling mechanism. That's the one. So that takes the place. That takes the place of a dock in the hubway system. So what we've done, the technology is lighter, cheaper, faster better we put it on a bicycle now instead of paying fifty thousand dollars for a hubway network uh, hubway station with 19 docking points and 10 bicycles we uh, were able to make these produce these for less than four hundred dollars each which is why we're able to operate without government funding without any sort of federal help anything like that um, I would definitely like to say I'm not here uh, against hubway I was the general manager of hubway from launch in 2011 through its first million trips in 2013 I understand the power of the bicycle. I understand the power it has in communities. And this is, it's not this year's model of bike share. This is an absolute game changer. So thrilled as an Arlington resident, proud Ward 3, uh, to be here in this room right now with this green bicycle. So thank you. 
If I could just do my follow-up question. I was starting asking about the smartphone app that's associated yeah. with it. So in conjunction, I don't know, somebody asked the question, but if <coughs> really asked if you go outside of the area, mm. will you send an alert and a warning to someone that they're leaving the, um, the service area and, and possibly charging them for leaving we draw, the jurisdiction? Excuse me. Yeah, we draw a wide map of what the service area is. What we want to do is enable a trip that may have been a car trip to be a bike trip, right? So if someone takes it out to, we did a pilot, 200 bicycles in Malden, Massachusetts last, uh, last fall. We had a bike end up in Reading. We went and got the bike and we brought it back because these all have GPS on them. So we know where the bike is at all times. Um, uh, um, I can unlock this bicycle remotely if for whatever reason it gets locked down and a person's phone isn't working. It's, it's just like a zip car, right? These are always talking on a, uh, a data network which is uh, 3G in this case. Um, but we don't, we don't restrict in that way. We will say, you know, if you take it 25 miles out, you know, you're gonna have to bring it back. Uh, but these are really made for short trips. And the average trip that we saw in Malden was about uh, 0.9 miles hmm. and about maybe 14 minutes or so. I can't remember the exact number, but very short. I mean, this is meant for, for quick trips. Um, think about someone who may drive in to Arlington to work during the day from far out but maybe they want to meet someone for lunch, right? This is a perfect thing for that. I have seven bicycles and I still use Hubway. And it's because maybe I take the tea in when it's raining and then it's sunny in the afternoon and I want to ride my bike instead of getting back on the bus, that sort of stuff. So it's really, you know, try to, to, to think differently. This isn't a replacement for ownership. Uh, this really is just maximum flexibility. And bike share typically is, has been uh, um, touted as first last mile transportation, those connections to transit. This is first last 10 feet. Because again, it locks to itself, you park it responsibly, and then you can just walk away. Yeah. Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I'm very excited about this, and I, I'm, I'm a Hubway user myself, and I'm disappointed in their strategy, but, but I'm you know, very excited to try other things. Um, I did see some of the, um, the bike share failures uh, in the press in China, but I was also visiting Berlin, and I saw it working really well, well yeah. there, even in the winter. So yeah. I was pretty pleased with that. So I'm, you know, I've, I've, I've definitely have a lot of faith that this can work, and I'm really excited about, you know, doing expanded pilot. I'll tell you the thing that I am most worried about, and I'm curious if you have any thoughts or strategies on this, is what fraction of Arlington bicycle trips begin and end at Alewife? Mm, and what yeah. the and obviously Alewife is in Cambridge, you know, and it has Hubway Station there, and so on and so forth. Have you, what's that? What are your, have you thought about the strategy for that? Oh, absolutely. So you know, uh, again, through my time at at, um, at Hubway, developed great contacts at the MBTA and at MassDOT, and I'm leveraging those now. And before we even launched in uh, in Mel, excuse me, in Malden, our, our 200 bike pilot, um, we had the team meet us at Malden Center uh, Station, just to say this is what our bikes are. Here's how they're gonna interact, because our riders are the T's riders, right? These are multimodal mm -hmm. uh, transportation users. Um, and just to help them understand, you know, we don't need bike rack space per se, but we do need to park them somewhere. Where do we guide our, our users to park? Um, and now that you know, we, we've been selected through this uh, MAPC process, we have a lot more stations to tour with the T, and we're working at the very top level with Jackie DeWolf, uh, uh, Sustainable Transportation Director at MassDOT. Uh, is connecting us with the right people uh, uh, on the ground to make sure that this is seamless because this is, uh, this is gonna be um, um, enable mode shift at a scale we haven't seen yet. I mean, Hubway, <coughs> I love it, of course, has been around for almost seven years now and is just tickling the 2,000 bike mark. I have 2,000 bikes sitting in a warehouse in Malden right now with 3,000 more coming. So this is the scale that we're thinking, okay? 16 municipalities, uh, this is a region-wide network. Um, and what we learned at Hubway is if you bring bicycles, people will ride them. Uh, and now we're gonna bring them uh, just at a scale we haven't seen before. So I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Um, I really think this, this could be a game changer. Uh, we couldn't have done it without MEPC. And to your earlier point about uh, the, the bike piles in China, really is a function of the regulatory environment. Um, before I even worked for this company, I, I touched MEPC and said, hey, what are you guys thinking about Dockless? And they're like, well, we're really not. You know, Hubway, it's got an exclusive thing for another five years. We're not really thinking dockless. And I said, well, we got to get out ahead of this because it will come. We just need to manage it properly. And that's really the, the, the key here. This is going to be uh, enterprise level transit um, at all the gateway cities. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chaplain. <clears throat> just to, to pitch in on an answer to your question, uh, Mr. Dunn. 
We, uh, working with the planning department, we are still looking at whether or not there might be a location near Thorndike Field, Magnolia Park, yeah. the dog park, leaning up to Alewife, where we can allow for some dockless bike, bike parking. Right sort before of ease, you, you know, whether or not the, the MBTA is cooperative with parking at Alewife, whether we can allow some parking there. So we're still, yeah. there's that big triangle yeah, of there's land, a whole lot of space uh, that we might be able to. If you can get space. the MBTA to do it, the, um, the back end of the MBTA behind the bus station, like where they do the, the snow melt there, mm -hmm. the, like which there's actually a big bike <coughs> cage there yes, already. Yeah. I think it's the west one. Um, there's actually a ton of room there. And if they let us put, if they let you put them there, like there's plenty of space and it's not like there's no vehicle traffic, there's none of, of, of that, which would be, <coughs> I just, yeah. so if, if they go along with it, then that's, you know, they've got the real estate. They just have to have the, the will. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Crowley. So the Malden experiment was a year? Or how long? No, it was actually six weeks. They launched it just around Halloween, uh -huh. uh, and it went to the first snow by design. So it was about six weeks, 2,200 active users in that time on 200 bicycles and more than 6,000 trips. Um, I mean, these are numbers on par with the Hubway launch. Uh, it was, it was mind-blowing, actually. <laughs> I can use that term. It was mind-blowing. Uh, um, uh, we get uh, word that a blizzard is coming. What have we had? Mm -hmm. Four of those in the last four weeks or something, yeah. right? Four Easter, right. Uh, so, I mean, I assume ridership is down then. Are they taken off the street during stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, so the winter obviously depressed ridership. We don't need as many bikes out in the street. What we have uh, is a strategy of a sort of safe houses, so to speak, uh, all around town. What we don't want to do is spend the carbon... <coughs> Uh, spend the carbon footprint of getting you know, a bunch of people and labor and vans and driving all the bikes back to a central location when the snow clears a few days later and the roads are fine and people want to ride again, now the bikes are five miles away. What we want to do is have sort of local pockets, whether it's a parking space that we rent or a storage unit that we rent. So bikes get off the street when bad stuff is coming, whether it's a, a snow event or a hurricane or whatever, uh, and then bikes come back out, but they never really leave the area. There's no sense in just transporting them all over the place. Thank you. Yeah. Anything more? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Mr. Crilly. So move that we uh, ask the manager to sign the memorandum of understanding. Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. So motion by Mr. Greeley, second by Mr. Dunn. Any further discussion? Very exciting. Very exciting. Is this the only color? Say <laughs> again? Is You're colorblind. I am, so. <laughs> it's, it's, what color do you want it to be? Blue? Or it yellow? is. It's blue. It's blue. <laughs> it's green and yellow. We've got blue. Right? Sorry. Okay. I'm having too much fun. I apologize. Okay. This is all, all right. those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your work on this. This is very exciting. Oh, how quickly can we expect to see these? Just tonight, I was told probably by uh, we're aiming for the beginning of July, so this this summer we'd be aiming. For. Fantastic, Great. fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, awesome. that was important. Of course. Yeah. All right. Steps. Moving right now. Now we move on to the consent agenda, where we <laughs> typically take one vote and limited discussion. We have uh, minutes of meeting, uh, March 19, 2018, approval, Town of Arlington Home Rehabilitation Program, Dean Carmen, Town Treasurer, request AHS, Ice Cream Fundraiser for Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, DFCI, Jefferson Cutter House Lawn, May 19, 2018, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., Sagawa Stogi, the uh, AHS Scoops Club, and request special one-day beer and wine license, 41418 <coughs> at Ron's Memorial Town Hall for private event, Jennifer Galing and Philip Schaefing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak to this? <laughs> I have a feeling that you're here to talk about uh, scoops. <laughs> HS Scoops. <laughs> you just identify yourself for the record and tell us a little bit about your event. Uh, hi, my name is Sagawa Stogi, and I'm a freshman as well as the president of the Arlington High School Scoops Club. Yeah. It's so a little background on Scooper Mania. Uh, the fundraiser is essentially an all-you-can-eat ice cream event inspired by Boston's Scooper Bowl uh, <coughs> in order to raise money for care and research at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Uh, we've ran this event for the past three years and raised a sum of $10,000. And therefore, today we are here uh, to, to request a permit to use the Jefferson Cutter House lawn on May 19th uh, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thank you very much, and thank you for doing that, for your yes. commitment to, to, to this. Yeah, it's a great event. Thank you it's a great event. Definitely. Thank you. Press of students coming out of our yeah. back. So. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion? So moved. Oh, so I'll second Ms. Rose. All right, Ms. Rowe with a second by Ms. Mahan. Um, 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? You, you're approved and- um, You're and free to go, I'm good, sure you're- good luck, <laughs> good luck with your event and we'll all try to swing on by. Thank you, you know, yeah, do, uh, do, I invite you all to definitely come. Yeah, thank you. excellent, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay, we now move on to a public hearing to set a prospective uh, rate removal, uh, removal rate of trees under the uh, tree protection bylaw. Uh, Adam W. Chapdelaine, town manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so in follow-up to last week's meeting, um, and also based upon some of the guidance or suggestions made by members of the board, I went back, worked with Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works, as well as Tim McQueen, the tree warden, to come up with a recommendation for the board's consideration for uh, a fee to set for the removal of trees under the tree protection bylaw, with the idea being that whatever the board uh, would vote to intend to set under the <coughs> tree protection bylaw, that the Director of Public Works administratively would implement the same fee for the removal of a public shade tree, or as outlined in the memo, a Chapter 87 tree. So we looked, at, um, we looked at what some other communities were doing, and there was a range uh, down towards the $50 per DBH where Arlington is now. Uh, there was, a, I think it was Amherst was at 90 per DBH. Boston was at 300 per DBH. Uh, and Concord, as had been cited at past meetings, was at $375 per DBH for tree removal. So we started looking at what uh, a two-inch tree costs to buy, which are the types of trees that we plant based on where we generally plant in the tree planting strip along sidewalks and roads. Um, and the cost uh, from a nursery for a two-inch tree is about $300. And if you take the full cost multiplier that Ms. Rowe had suggested at the last meeting of 2.5, uh, not to walk you through the math, but for those watching at home, I, I, I'll do that. Um, if you multiply the cost by 2.5, you come up with $750 as the fully loaded cost of a two-inch tree. So then if you move away from that, if you look at a 10-inch tree, which was the example that was sort of being cited at the last meeting of the board, if you remove a 10-inch tree and would like to replace that 10 inches of DBH with five two-inch trees, which is the, the measure we're using for this purpose, you'd, um, you'd have to buy five trees at that fully loaded cost of 750 per multiplied by five is 3750. So if you want to be able to recoup all the funds that you will need to do that, you would take that 3750 uh, $3, divided by the 10 uh, dBH of the tree that was removed and you'd come up with $375 per dBH. Uh, tested that math with larger trees and the math was linear just to make sure that I was uh, <laughs> doing, that, doing that properly. So um, it's frankly a little more aggressive than I thought we would be um, when we were even sitting here last week, but after working on the math and getting a better understanding of what it actually costs to plant trees and then care for the trees over their first several years in the ground, um, I'm confident that this is an appropriate number and I can also tell you that if the board votes to do this, um, Mike Rademacher would be comfortable setting the same fee for the Chapter 87 trees, the public shade trees. So happy to discuss, but uh, the recommendation would be for the board, uh, I guess to vote the intention of setting the fee at 375 per DBH should the bylaw change pass at town meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Chaplain. Before I recognize members of the public, are there any questions or comments, comments for uh, the manager? Ms. Rowe. I think this is much better. And um, while Mr. Kelly said it should be th times three, he only works in very expensive communities. <laughs> <laughs> they do 2.5 is good. All right. I think that that's absolutely right when you think about the kind of care that a tree has once it's in place and it has to be watered and, and you know, get a guarantee. So thank you for all the work. Any further questions or comments for the manager? Uh, hearing none, I'll recognize members of the public or tree committee as it may be. You may be the stamps. You can identify yourself for the record, please. Thank you for uh, letting me say something, Susan Stamps from the tree committee. You can pull, you can pull that down. Oh, we really, uh, really appreciate the extra effort that our town manager and our uh, Adam Chapdelaine and our DPW superintendent Mike Rademacher put into doing these numbers and uh, we completely agree that 375 per inch of DBH is um, the right number it could probably be even higher um, but it's it's so much better than it is now and it's better than the tree committee suggested last week. So thank you very much. We really appreciate the support. Great. Thank you very much, Ms. Stamps. Is there anyone else wishing to uh, 
to testify in this. Hearing none, uh, Mr. Dunn. Oh, Mr. Graham. I just have a, 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 I'm trying to do math and DBH and all of that. Clarissa, do you know the size of the trees on Hutchinson that were cut down? They looked to me, Susan they there. were, a, but, and I, I, I just looked at the tree trunks. Yeah. It looked big. to me like they were 10 inch caliper. Oh, they are 10. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there were five of them. Right. So that's a lot of. And am I right? Currently, that would have been $500 per tree. Right. Under this, it would be right, significantly more. more. And I don't know, honestly, whether that was one tree that had five trunks. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, so I, I can't really okay. tell. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Dunn? Uh, I'm. I'm I move the, our intent to set the rate of 375 to inform town meeting of that in our, our comment. And uh, I know that there's, for some people, this is going to be some sticker shock. And uh, I can talk to them. And uh, the things that I will remind them of is really how relatively few trees that this applies to, because our bylaw only applies to a very specific set of trees in uh, the setback when during a, a, a reconstruction of a house. And if you're in your house you, and you just, you've got a tree that's you know, bu bugging you and dropping too much stuff on your backyard or whatever, and you just want to take it down, you still can, and it doesn't, you know, it's your choice and it's your property, you get to do it. This is very um, narrowly aimed at a very specific set of developer activities, and we want those developers to stop it, and raising that price is uh, the appropriate way to do it. And that's the argument that I will gladly bring to town meeting. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Is there a second on second. Mr. Uh, Mr. Dunn's motion? Is a second by Ms. Mahan. Ms. Mr. Hahn. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to um, ask if I may adjust the comment as it's currently written, not only to reflect um, the prospective rate that you're putting in for the tree protection bylaw, but also to reflect the cost. Um, I believe it, we thought it was north of $100. It's nearly, it's more than triple that. Um, if I could adjust the comment, I, I'd appreciate it. Personally, I would appreciate if you would adjust the comment because I think it's actually making a different case within the comment mm -hmm. right now. Yep. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hearing no objection, that, that's uh, part of the motion. Um, okay, any further comment? On a motion by uh, Mr. Dunn, seconded by Ms. Mahan, was it? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very much, and thank, thank you for the work on this, and please thank uh, Mr. Rademacher. Uh, we did that, we did nine. We now move on to uh, warrant article hearings, articles for review. Uh, article 12, <coughs> bylaw amendment, betterment bylaw revision. Um, how, how do you want to handle this? You ready to roll through? Sure, one I'm, by one. I'm, I'm happy to talk so about it. The first one is article 12, bylaw amendment, betterment bylaw revision. So, um, Mr. Chairman, the uh, what you have in front of you with respect to uh, revisions to our betterment bylaw is the product of a fairly lengthy uh, period of time in terms of collecting people's concerns about the betterment bylaw and about private ways generally, uh, both in the town manager's office, the legal department, and several other places. Uh, what we were able to find, though, is that some of the decisions that need to be made to address those concerns or complaints um, are not um, ready to be put in front of town meeting. There were some things that we were ready to essentially try to, to clarify the betterment bylaw. As the betterment bylaw currently reads, repairs to private ways, it's quite confusing as to who's going to be doing the work. It calls everything a temporary repair, even though we're oftentimes resurfacing roadways. Um, there are other criticisms about the way that it calculates the butters. One of the problems that's been in front of the selectmen only recently has been uh, folks trying to articulate that the town is responsible because it's in a butter. And there are circumstances where that would probably be fair, such as if the town is in a butter to a, you know, a park and recreation facility or something of that nature. But there are other circumstances where we've taken a very small piece of land by a tax title and folks are saying, you're in a butter under this uh, bylaw and they want us to pay a portion of a private way that the town doesn't really, shouldn't really be responsible for. Um, there are also some other issues with respect to um, the town having the ability to make repairs to private ways if it so wishes without, wishes without in incurring liability. So for some time, DPW has occasionally been putting extra patch when they're working on a public way 
on a private way. Um, and unfortunately, the result of that is folks ended up suing us, claiming that we're now responsible for the private way because out of the kindness of our hearts, we put some patch in some potholes that folks complained about. Um, and there is a process by which you could sort of take a private way by a conscription. If you were really, if we resurfaced it, I would agree that we are now responsible for it. But uh, another facet that we were able to address was uh, the ability for us to make certain temporary repairs and only temporary repairs in the instances where the Department of Public Works has basically determined that this is a dangerous situation for emergency response vehicles, police and fire, that they can't traverse a public way, a private way. Um, to access the homes that they need to access because of the condition of the road. And we could make temporary repairs of our own decision with the, the board's approval. So those things we were ready to essentially address, the things that we weren't ready to address were, should we change the calculation of how many abutters are necessary? In some communities, it's 51%. Here, it's 2 thirds. Um, we also weren't necessarily ready to address the issue of whether or not abutters on certain types of private ways where some of the abutters don't use the private way at all. They might have rights to it, but it's their backyard that's abutting and there's some kind of retaining wall, which puts a disproportionate burden on um, some folks who live and access their driveways and homes via that private way. So there are a lot of things that uh, I think can need to, uh, from what I understand from the Director of Public Works, the Town Manager's Office, um, need um, further study, but we've recommended the changes uh, to the private way uh, repair bylaw that we think we are ready to make, including just changes to language to make it clear what your responsibility is as a resident on a private way and what the town's process is for um, making certain types <coughs> of repairs. So uh, we've made some clarifications. We've inserted a few things that help protect the town so that we don't end up getting sued if we need to make uh, repairs uh, for the purpose of emergency vehicle access. Um, and then we've recommended further study on the types of issues that I think do need to be discussed, but we're not, we're just not there yet in terms of having the information that we need. Okay, if any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Move approval. There's a motion by Ms. Mahan for approval. Second. There's a second by Mr. Dunn. I, I have a question. Um, at the bottom of page three of your memo, um, you have the language, the private property owners abutting private ways are responsible for the maintenance of such ways which must be maintained so that there are no defects to impede the safe passage of emergency vehicles. Um, some of us have heard of uh, situations uh, recently where abutters of private ways have been placing debris or other obstructions into the private way. I'm wondering if it is within the scope um, of the article to add to this so that there are no defects, debris, or other obstructions to impede the safe passage of emergency vehicles. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for raising that. May I respond? Yes. So uh, I am aware, I think I'm aware of the situation that, uh, that you're, you're referencing, um, which has proven a little bit uh, complicated because some private ways are private ways only in certain sections and they're public ways in other sections. Just to, I know that there's a ton of people watching on TV, as always. Um, there are three types of ways in Arlington. There's public ways, which, the, um, which are roadways that were not only approved by the town, but were accepted by the town. And we basically take ownership of them and maintain them. The second are statutory private ways. And that's the majority of the private ways in Arlington. They were approved by a board of survey or the board of selectmen at some point in time, but they weren't accepted. So when we approve those, we do approve the grade that those private ways are supposed to be set at. Um, and then thirdly, there are true private ways, which are essentially, um, uh, in other communities, they're basically driveways that access multiple properties. And you can basically prohibit traffic from using those. But the other sort of detail that's important is that um, <coughs> towns are not obligated, nor are they supposed to service private ways for snow removal, trash removal, and other services unless those ways are kept open to the public. So I think that we have some strategies already in the toolbox to address the situation that you're referencing. The legal department has been doing some research and title work on that particular problem so that we can best engage um, the resident we think um, has created an obstruction because in my mind, number one, you've changed the grade to an approved private way, which you can't do. 
the remedy for that is not super clear, to be frank with you, uh, but it's still you know, not supposed to be done. Secondly, um, you have made it impossible for through traffic to go through what's otherwise approved, which poses a risk to emergency service vehicles, which is our main concern. Right. But also, if you want to continue to have snow removal and trash and recycling service, you can't obstruct pu the public's use of, uh, of what's supposed to be a throughway. Yep. So I, I think we have got tools already in place, okay. and um, we've been sort of fully apprised of this situation and are trying to do the legal work that would be necessary to see that through. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone? Oh, Mr. Dunn. I just wanted to note that I live on a private way. So do I. Two. I live on two private ways. Right. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I will note that. How do you do that? I'm on a corner lot. Uh, that means I get to pay for each of them. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. a fix that. Look at you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Yeah, the anyway. public. Is there, that, uh, yeah. Is there anyone wishing to testify on this? Hearing none. Okay. We have a motion um, on the floor and has been seconded. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thank you very much for your work on this. We now move on to Article 24, Revolving Funds. Will we recommend favorable action? Second. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Ms. Mahan. Any further discussion by the board? Mr. Chair? Yes. Oh. Oh. Uh, one, one administrative uh, suggested change uh, under town hall rentals, account 4150. I believe it's on the second page um, in, your, in your agenda. The limit right now is $100,000 for expenditures, but last year's expenditures actually exceeded that, so I would suggest we increase that to $125,000. Uh, hearing no uh, no objection, uh, the the the, amendment, the uh, motion is so amended. amended. Yep. Thank you. Um, thank you for pointing that out. I have noticed. That. Um, is there anyone from the public wishing to testify on this? Hearing none. <coughs> all those in favor of the motion by Mr. Greeley. Aye. 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 All opposed. It's unanimous. We now move on to special town meeting article three. Vote. Study of demolition of historic residential buildings. Do you have? Um, so, um, sorry. Um, <clears throat> pursuant to the numerous hearings that we've had about this issue, um, I've we the board of selectmen approved a special town meeting article to establish a um, study committee to examine the several sort of inc interconnecting issues uh, with respect to residential um, demolition of residential homes in Arlington. As the board will recall, the original. Um, effort uh, by a resident petition was to deal with this issue in terms of historic structures. <coughs> so I've developed a vote for your consideration that's rooted in that, um, although obviously this is a conversation that um, is frankly probably not so solely about historic structures. It's also about um, the manner in which uh, development and redevelopment is happening in Arlington. So if the board has any feedback, it'd be Happy to hear it. Thank you very much. Do any of my colleagues have any comments, questions to Don? I have lots on this one. Lots. Okay. All right. Uh, so when we heard from Len Carden, the original proponent about this, the thing that he told us that brought him here and the pictures that he showed were talking about teardowns. And that he's not the first constituent to talk to us about teardowns. We've heard it at multiple uh, town meetings, and I th I'm sure, I mean, you're, I'm sure all of your experiences are like mine that we, you know, we have people who talk to about this, you know, at Stop and Shop and on the street and so on and so forth. Um, so last week when we talked about this, I, I think I let myself get distracted by the possibility of talking about a bylaw amendment when I should have been focusing on what the problem is. The problem isn't historic regulations. The problem is teardowns. And so I'd like to suggest we go in a different direction than what we have drafted here. Uh, I think that we should send this to the residential study group uh, in some form, like, and I can imagine a couple of them, and I'm sure uh, Doug can help us out, either like through a resolution or updating, that's a town meeting committee, so we could update the, cha the, the charge um, from town meeting. Um, the question about teardowns is a really tangled <coughs> one, because we're talking about one or two dozen projects per year, and the projects from, range from ones that are well-liked, generally, to ones that are generally loathed. And there's a whole spectrum of these projects that are in, that are in between. Uh, we need more data. We need a way to evaluate these projects and figure out how to find a consensus on which ones are generally disliked, and then how to prevent those disliked ones from going in the future. In the vast <coughs> majority of cases, these are zoning changes, not historic bylaw changes. 
So um, I'm going to make a motion, and I move that we re refer the teardown issues described by the original 10 voter article to the, reg to the residential study group. Second. And is that with a, with a um the recommendation of no action on this this article. No, I think that's an action. So, like like I said, there's two, and and, and, I, and I'm hesitating to actually say, but like I can imagine us proposing a resolution where a town meeting hereby resolves that these issues should be studied <coughs> by the residential study group, right. or we could do like a, like that committee has a formal charge from town meeting, right. and we could say town meeting hereby amends the charge. And I and I, I don't I'm sure Doug can can help us, but the, the intent that I'm trying to do here, hopefully, you under, is clear. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Dunn, second by Ms. Rowe. Is there any further discussion on that? Um, is there anyone from the public wishing to address this? We, oh, sorry. Could you take out the word historic, please? Yeah, Mr. Hyde. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I can't take the word historic out of the, uh, out of the uh, Warren article. I can certainly take it out of your I mean, I, I think that it's fair game to acknowledge that this started in the, in the context of uh, the historic bylaw because that's our demolition delay bylaw. And that the board's discussion of this has led it to the conclusion that this is not really limited to a historic issue and that the residential study group can, should be examining this as a, a broader issue. So I, I can take out historic from the perspective of your vote, I just, I can't modify the Warren article at this point in time. This is where if I could go back in time to our discussion yeah. last week, I would have um, seen yeah. this coming and I, I've missed I it. I just think it's gonna, it's gonna muddy the waters. I mean, it I, I, yeah. it, it's about teardowns. It's not, you know, when you put the word historic in, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a bomb that explodes in town meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Any further uh, discussion before we hear from the public? Okay. Sir. Uh, my name is Steve Moore. I live on Piedmont Street. I didn't expect to, to speak tonight. I um, had one question based on referral to the, um, the Residential Study Committee Advisory Group. Do you ever refer those to a time certain, or do you leave it open-ended? We definitely, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we can do, so we have in the past, or, and of course when I say we in this case, it is town meeting, right? So oh, yes, this is the Board of Selectmen making a recommendation to town meeting. Uh, we, there definitely have been times where the charges was, please report back next year or in six months or something like that. That definitely can be a part of it. Uh, do you plan to do that with the motion that you're making here? I hadn't been so far, no. Um, the residential, st uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission. Please. Um, uh, the residential study group so far has been, they've been meeting and they've been coming up every year with different things that we did. So, you know, uh, changing the grade of the driveways, for instance, uh, and stuff like that. And um, I feel like the stuff that they're wrestling with is fairly difficult. And so I haven't, it's an interesting question and I'm open to other conversation about it. I hadn't really thought about it. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the only reason that I uh, bring it up is that uh, being, Seeing as teardowns is a large issue, and seeing as that uh, with the improved economy, my guess is that teardowns will be an increasing problem in town in the near term future. If too much time is spent studying the issue <coughs> rather than acting on the issue, the damage will be done, and retroactively you can't fix that. So that's my only concern. Leaving it too open ended uh, does not get action on it as quickly. I'm sure that group is quite busy. And, and this is one more thing you're adding to it. However, this is a large issue, I know. That's all I wanted to say about it. I think one of the formulation, potential formulations, and we have to discuss this, is, is for the residential study group to uh, come up with some proposed um, zoning changes, which would, in that case, go to the redevelopment board for, for potential recommendation at a town meeting. But you know that would likely be next year, so that would be the charge from this year's sure. town meeting. That's, that's okay. one potential I, route for us to go. Yeah. Well, thank you. I just wanted to register that. It's thank you. Time I appreciate that. Issue. It's that's a very, it's a very thank you. important point. Thank you. Um, do you have something to scroll? Yeah. No. 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 Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion, by the way? Anyone else from a point? <coughs> Hearing that? Mr. Hines. I'm sorry. I just need to be a little bit more clear since we won't have a lot of time for discussion. So 
Um, it's the consensus of the board, to my understanding, that this is to be referred to the residential study group and that the purpose is to examine potential zoning changes um, to address residential teardowns um, and that we'll, we will leave out the examination of other issues with the historical commission. Right. Okay. Mr. Assuming we vote for it, I do plan to vote for it because I agree with the sentiment that we I think, I guess, in with, of course, of course the board's agreement, the, I think an important element that I want to convey, Doug, is that we're not saying, the board isn't saying, make a zoning change that stops teardowns. What we very explicitly are saying is evaluate teardowns and stop the ones, stop the ones that should be stopped, you know, for lack of a more elegant phrase. Is, and, and just I want to make sure procedurally I'm correct if um, this goes to town meeting is successful in what the board is proposing and if the residential study committee um, finds that by the anticipated special town meeting in the fall um, that could be an avenue for them if they felt they had done the due diligence and could place something before that town meeting um, that could pass zoning bylaws, et cetera. Um, so to answer the time question, that would be an avenue for them. That's correct, Ms. Vaughn. Okay, thank you. And I, I just want to say that I, I had kind of come around to a similar sentiment to, to, to Mr. Uh, Dunn, that, and I, I communicated this to Mr. Cardin yesterday, that um, you know, my sense is with the historic preservation um, <clears throat> bylaw, that, that's meant to protect particularly valuable assets within, within the town. And it, it, that did really seem from the, the hearings that we had that, that the goal here is to try to prevent the construction of certain types of things. So that's why I, I completely agree with the sentiment that having the residential study group look at this, look at all the economic impacts, look at all of the neighborhood char character impacts, the impacts on, on the homeowners themselves, and come up with some zoning recommendations most likely um, is, is the way to go. So any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, um, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Ms. Rowe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Now move on to uh, Article 4, Home Rule Legislation, Property Tax Deferrals. So um, I'll, I can talk about uh, 4 and 5 in concert if the board Please. so chooses. So uh, Articles 4 and 5 are two uh, potential means that the town manager's office, the uh, uh, health department, the town council's office, a number of other folks have uh, identified as ways in which we can try to keep delivering on this board's commitment to reduce the tax burden on uh, Arlington's uh, senior uh, citizen property owners, especially as we approach override and expensive debt exclusion questions. So the first article um, essentially uh, allows us to uh, build on a existing program for property tax deferrals um, by submitting home rule legislation that allows us to increase the maximum um, uh, income in order to be eligible for this program. You'll see the other, in the memo, the other uh, requirements. Um, I think that the income limit is technically $20,000 under the statute, which is absurd, although um, I believe that town meeting uh, under the current regulatory framework could increase it to $57,000, which is still probably not enough. This has been a program that's been fairly successful in Lexington for a number of years. Um, they take regular votes to um, examine whether or not they want to increase this amount. Um, and again, its main function is to give folks flexibility and options. Um, going forward, dealing with their, their tax bills, um, especially after retirement. Uh, special Town Meeting Article 5 is a little bit more of a drastic measure. It's somewhat similar in the sense that it uh, would also require uh, special legislation and would build off an existing state circuit breaker uh, program. This was originally implemented in Sudbury, um, but it's been adopted by a number of other communities, most recently Concord. Given the scope of what we potentially be talking about here, um, this is probably going to be special legislation that would require a ballot question uh, to approve it. But the long and short of it here is that um, if you meet the cur certain criteria, you're over 65, uh, you've lived in Arlington for more than 10 years, you own a home uh, worth less than the median assessed value in Arlington, um, and you have income less than the uh, state circuit breaker ceiling, 
uh, we basically can, some folks can apply to have their property tax not exceed 10% of their, of their total income. This is a little bit more complicated to administer. Uh, Brookline's been dedicating significant study to this. They've uh, had some testimony from folks in Sudbury um, and in other communities where they've tried this program out. Um, I don't know, I think the manager would maybe be better uh, equipped to answer questions about our readiness <coughs> to do it, but uh, we thought that it was an important thing to put before the board, particularly if the board uh, feels there's momentum maybe not to act right away, but uh, wants to see further study on this issue. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Hi, Mr. Chaplin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So j just to build on that, my uh, position would be that uh, number four, uh, article number four, uh, I think is pretty readily uh, readily able to be considered by the board and to move forward uh, because we would still be the sort of the masters of our own destiny in setting what the income limits would be uh, and in any event likely wouldn't have any dra uh, drastic change to what the income limits are. I do think after a closer inspection of the work that town council has done, five uh, strikes me as needing more work before we are ready to put a proposal before town meeting and um, I would rather we have more time to study and potentially come back for a fall town meeting. Uh, to seek this program rather than move forward with it now, just based on the the bottom line, yeah, bottom line impacts on other taxpayers that are included. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chaplain. Um, I did want to thank both of you for the quick turnaround on this. Um, you know, in the, in the past, as we've um, approached um, override votes, I mean, we've often packaged some of these these measures alongside it, but I think that. Um, uh, it is good that we're being proactive uh, ahead of time, a, a year ahead of time with this, because we certainly have a lot of folks in town who are, um, are on fixed incomes, but are sitting on valuable assets, which is their homes, mm -hmm. and, and giving them the opportunity to tap into that, that, that value and not be forced from their, their homes um, because of a tax liability, I think, is, is an important tool. Um, I do appreciate uh, what you're saying on uh, Article 5, though, and the, the uh, means tested senior tax relief. So I'd like to hear from my colleagues on this if anyone has any questions or comments. Here, we're hearing on. Motion by Ms. Mahan, and both? Or, uh, no, 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 both no. are first. Are first. Yeah, Correct. Four. There's a motion by Ms. Mahan. Second? Second. Second by Ms. Rowe. Is there anyone from the public wishing to, to uh, speak to this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, Article 4. Four is uh, recommended for favorable action. Is there a motion on Article 5? Not move no action, but could we incorporate um, the manager's comments about um, continue to work on this and it's anticipated yeah. <laughs> for fall? Yeah, with the Board of Assessors perhaps would be a part of that recommendation. But make sure it says possibly and, you know, yeah. in case something should come up that it's not ready. Okay. okay there a motion, no Ms. Action. Mahan. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Dunn? I, um, I think we probably should talk to the Finance Committee, too, about that one as we as we go through it. <coughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of uh, Ms. Mahan's uh, motion, seconded by Mr. Dunn? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Now we want to a uh, special town meeting Article 6, Home Rule Legislation Package Store Licenses. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I think the only, uh, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. I think the only uh, real question before the board, if it's inclined to move favorable action, is, in, is how many um, additional licenses we'd want to potentially seek. Okay, uh, Ms. Mahan. Um, I was thinking about this and I'm thinking about the uh, two or three um, inquiries we've received over the past two or three years of, um, individuals, owners um, that have been asking if, you know, there was any licenses available to them and what we've been saying for the past two or three years are, you know, perhaps you should talk to the um, current, I feel funny saying package stores, all alcohol stores um, in Arlington to see if you could work something out. But it's, it's, it's going on three years now. So if I had my druthers, um, what I would propose and would like to hear from my colleagues and the way that I understand that this would be worded if um, my intent was successful would be um, should the board, shall the board of selectmen of the town be authorized to issue up to six licenses, meaning that we have five and requesting one more. And also, I'm, I'm going to also pick on um, <coughs> Mr. Greeley's um, memory in the past. 
when we first had these discussions um, about setting all alcohol package stores, um, and it might have been you who initiated the discussion that there was discussion on the then board that we also ideally try to ha have geographical yeah. distribution, distribution in that. And, and what I'm thinking at right now, the reason why I'm saying up to six is we have two in East Arlington, two in what I would call the center, and one in the Heights, yep. which is where those serious inquiries ha uh, have originated. So that would be what I would put on the table if, if here for my colleagues. In other words, replacing the first blank in the, rec in the recommended vote with six and the second blank with five? Correct. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. There's a motion by Ms. Ms. That's a motion. Yes. By Ms. Mahan. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Rowe. Is there any further discussion of this? Hearing none. Thank well, you. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh. One moment. Uh, yeah. I just want... Aren't we really just asking the voters to approve one? Right. Right. Six. One more. Well, it looks like this, the language that's been recommended to us by town council says authorized to issue up to six licenses, replacement of up to five. Is it, does it really? Yes. It has to be, it has to be, it has to be worded that way. that way? Okay. Lord okay. knows why, but yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine. Yeah, I know. It's a little confusing. It means one additional, but we'll, have, we'll have to yeah, explain that in the comment. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Grilly. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak to this? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. That is that is passed. Um, <clears throat> we now move on to a uh, special town meeting article seven, home rule legislation bylaw amendment gender neutral language, which was requested by the board. Mr. Heim. So, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This builds off of uh, the board's. Uh, endorsement um, and proposed vote to change the Board of Selectmen to a select board and um, the uh, associated pronouns. Uh, this would essentially uh, probably, probably what I'm envisioning is a, is, a, is a pretty broad mandate vote, both to submit legis uh, special legislation and to do a, essentially a sweep of the town bylaws to replace all gendered pronouns <coughs> with gender neutral pronouns. Right. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Any uh, discussion or motion? Move approval. Moved by Ms. Rowe. So, oh, sorry. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Dunn. So, what exactly is the motion the town meeting is going to take? So, the town meeting will take uh, essentially a bifurcated motion. Yeah. The first motion will be to uh, substitute all gendered pronouns in the, throughout the entirety of the town bylaws and replace them with, non, uh, with gender neutral pronouns. And then the second will be to submit special legislation. Or, actually, I think I can just craft it so to be authorized an amendment to or in addition to the special legislation about the select board to include um, changing all uh, gendered pronouns in the town manager act to gender neutral pronouns in the town manager act so the only, the only thing that won't be touched is is the zoning bylaw but i think the zoning bylaw was just re, in the recodification a lot of that was cleaned up maybe not everything but but a lot so that means that uh, there there won't be like a I just want to be clear uh, there won't be like a red line version that people can we, uh, that'll be uh, that'll be a very large document yeah um, I mean I, and I, I I'm not suggesting it should be there I'm just making sure I understand what we're talking about I, I, it's certainly possible Mr Dunn I yeah. could um, prepare a red lined version of the town bylaws and maybe put it on the town's uh, <laughs> website uh, and distribute it to town meeting members just so they could see. I think I did account. It's something like fifty some odd changes once you within the uh, town bylaws, and I can't remember how many it was in the town manager act, but it it can certainly be done. So one thing is, is I don't like us. Obviously, I don't like us asking for things that we don't need. This is one we're going to need it eventually, anyway, right? I don't know. I kind of I'm curious. What what do you what do people think? I don't know. I, I have to say that I, I I find for this purpose a red line copy to be overwhelming and, o and o an overkill. I think that, frankly, I think that the approach that the zoning uh, recodification uh, committee took makes sense, which is a table which has a <coughs> reference of where the current where the current reference is found, and then in the next next cell over just just says what what would be changed. You know, and, and it's easily cross-referenced at that point. I, I think I think otherwise it's overkill. It's pages and pages and pages of, of bylaw. 
since I can't see red line documents. <laughs> there you I'm go. Sitting at the table. <laughs> no, there you go. I, yeah. I can't tell which is which. That and that that's another good argument not to uh, <laughs> not to do it. Yeah, Mr. Hine. Mr. Chairman, if if I may, um, I've got two weeks. If I can come up with maybe a couple of different um, sort of supplemental materials or reference materials for the board to choose from, be happy to do that. I'm sure I could find some assistance in maybe finding the best way that we can let folks know these are all the changes that, that would be made. And I, we will have to submit something to the Attorney General's office, so it's not as if, but I don't think the actual vote would necessarily have to detail right. every single red line. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think a supplemental um, strategy makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame because we know we're just talking about a quick global search and replace, but we have to we have yeah. to do this. So, uh, okay, we had a uh, motion by. Okay, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak to this? Hearing none. Uh, motion by Ms. Rowe, second by Mr. Dunn. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Is unanimous. We now move on to final votes and comments. Articles for review, it's Article 7, 8, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 23. I want to note that the, um, the board is uh, reviewing and taking up, th so this is not a public hearing. Uh, we are reviewing and taking up the final votes that we want to put before town meeting along with comments for these. I do want to note that uh, we were just delivered uh, on our desks uh, new language for the draft vote and comment for the um, Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. Obviously, we have not had a chance to read through this. So, um, if the board wishes to vote on it, that, that is fine. I don't anticipate. I don't expect us to have to vote on this without going through it. But as you're going through an ex any explanations of the final votes and comments, I'd I would appreciate uh, Mr. Heim if you can give us a synopsis of the changes that have been discussed on on this would be helpful. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I know that there are some folks here from the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. Um, uh, Adrian and Stephanie have been uh, very patient in working with myself and with the planning director. Um, what you've got in front of you is a, a, a pretty sweeping reorganization um, with largely the same duties and responsibilities, as though some additional duties and responsibilities. I'll try to highlight a few things that are sort of important. The, the concept, as uh, the commission explained to me, was to try to create an umbrella organization so that we wouldn't have five, six, seven totally distinct and separate um, bodies committed to working on uh, issues of art and culture in Arlington. But at the same time, recognizing that there's going to be the need for some specialization. So what's the, the, the sort of centerpiece of it is the creation of a core committee, which uh, actually has a little bit of a flexible membership, but um, it maintains a role for the Board of Selectmen, the uh, school committee, uh, some town manager appointments from the business community, the arts community, uh, the nonprofit community related to the arts, to establish a sort of governing board that'll make policy making level decisions um, about art and culture in Arlington, including the implementation of the Arlington Cultural Plan. At the same time, there are contemplated five um, separate action committees. Uh, one of which will always be standing, and that's the Grants Committee. And the specific reason for that is the Grants Committee will essentially uh, be what the Arlington Cultural Council is now. State law requires this board to appoint cultural council members, and they have to be the people who uh, distribute grants from the MCC. So we couldn't totally operate flexibility with total flexibility with respect to that institution. And they also have certain things like term limits that we didn't necessarily want to apply to everybody else. I think that I'm, I'm trying to summarize this as best as possible in the interest of your time, but the, um, the other uh, four committees, action committees, speak to central issues, public art, uh, fundraising or resource development, uh, marketing and evaluation, and I'm missing one. Programs and festivals. And uh, the idea is that they're hoping that all those sort of subcommittees will be staffed. And if they are staffed with volunteers, then each one of those would have a representative on this core committee. It's a little complicated, but it's, 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 it's a very flexible mechanism that sort of ensures this sort of inclusive and efficient um, organization. They'll still have their ability to create ad hoc committees. 
um, that might study something specific like theater in Arlington or Capitol Square or something like that. Um, and then finally, uh, it clarifies a little bit the relationship, the integral relationship that the uh, Planning and Community Development Office uh, really has in, uh, uh, for a lot of these arts and cultures oriented committees now and would be under the reorganization, giving the planning director a sort of seat at the table as a liaison to this committee and talking a little bit more explicitly about how staff, um, staffing might be funded for um, the commission. So that's the rundown of it. I know it's quite an extensive total replacement of the bylaw, but most of the duties and responsibilities and areas of interest are there. They're just bringing in a few others so that the Cultural Council, the, commission, the Committee for Public Art, the Vision 2020 Arts and Culture Task Force, and a bunch of other things are all being brought under this one organization. No, not that one. Sorry. I might have to correct that. Okay. Thank you very much. Th th thank you. Thank you for the summary. Um, on this, and we do have other uh, articles for re review here, so I'd, I'd leave it to the pleasure of the board whether you would like to have more time to actually read, th read through this um, and, and vote this final comment and, and, uh, and vote. Uh, at our April 9th meeting, which I believe still gives us time to make the report. Um, we also have the other other final uh, votes and comments. Do I have a motion on any of this? <laughs> Mr. Dunn. So I think I'd, I'd like to defer on 13. Okay. So, uh, and I have um, one change that I'd like to make to seven. So uh, seven is uh, the no action on warrant delivery and I'd like to add a sentence that we have agreed to refer it to the vision 2020 aka envision Arlington governance subcommittee okay do I have any objection right. Hearing no objection. so with that I'd like to move 7 8 10 14 15 16 17 23 second, second. Mr. Grill. Okay. any further discussion on Mr. Dunn's motion Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, that's unanimous. Um, I would just like to say that um, as you, we will pick this up obviously on April 9th. I did have just one question just for you to ponder uh, during, during there, maybe a minor issue under uh, 1A678. Uh, I noticed there are several of the appointments that are strictly by the town manager, but it's been our tradition to have town manager appointments and be a, uh, with the consent of the board of selectmen. Is, is there a specific reason for? Um, there's not a. Not that we don't trust the manager to make <laughs> excellent appointments, but yeah. Of course, I, I think that um, part of it was this, there's been a couple of different iterations of this, and uh, we wanted to make sure the board had its sort of three at large, but I, I guess I'll have to consult with these folks to make sure that that's capturing what they wanted. I tried to develop something that you know met there's been obviously a lot of discussions we've gone through a couple of different iterations of this so i can circle back with these folks and make sure that we're clear on whether or not they want to depart from present practice or not yeah uh, mr chaplain <clears throat> just a uh, sort of responding um sort of ad hoc here adding the board in there is certainly doable but it makes it almost a three-step appointment process because you're, right. you're asking that you know, whether it be the, the business community or the nonprofit Got community, it. the local community, then it's me, then it's the board. Yeah. It's okay, but it does, it might not, it doesn't immediately appear as such, but there is three levels there. I'm not hung up. It's okay, I, it's not. Okay. And, and I would just, just, if I may, Mr. Chairman, just following that along, if it travels the way it is, um, you're, you're always very diligent in terms of notifying the board whether it's an email or <clears throat> some packet information, just to, you know, once this group is finalized, just provide the board with, um, you know, who the other appointees were by the various um, entities. It makes sense. N not, not as they come in, you know what I mean? Like once the group is formed, yeah. whatever manner you see fit. I think we've actually done that before. I'm, I'm struggling to recall which committee, but uh, I think in the past, in a more ambiguous setup, I've provided a roster for endorsement yeah. or something okay. like that. So we, we, I'm we, not we saying can you have to that. do that. It would be more like FYI. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. It, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you very much for the synopsis on this. Thank you to all of the ACAC folks for the work on this. I'm sorry we can't 
quite vote the, f the final language and comment tonight, but, but um, it, it just in fairness to my colleagues, we're going to have to give them a, a week, uh, two weeks to uh, just look at it and <coughs> digest it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, um, I don't think we've taken the vote, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. We now move on to uh, new business. Uh, Ms. Meyer. No new business. No new business. Mr. Heim. No new business, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chapdelaine. Just a couple uh, quick pieces. One, uh, I wanted to share with the board, um, as the board knows, we're uh, officially a member of the Metro Mayor's Coalition now as a community. Uh, so today, uh, I was fortunate to be part of the coalition who had a meeting with uh, Senate Chair of Ways and Means, Karen Spilka, who's soon to be the new Senate President. Uh, so that was a very, um, very nice audience to have. But very important to Arlington, there was a heavy emphasis put on increasing the Community Preservation Act mm. uh, matching funds. Mm. That's a priority of the coalition. Mm. <clears throat> and was clearly articulated to. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 this is the two year cycle, and we're pretty confident um, of the Senate, certainly, but um, there's a little problem with the House. some new language that came out from CHAPA that's going to confuse the issue. But we, we think we're in um, pretty good shape to get the increase. So keep, you know, we should as a community um, underline the need for the increased um, revenue. I agree. I agree. And it's, it's good to be around with a group of, of the 14 communities in the Metro Mayor's Coalition. I think 12 of the communities are our CPA yes. communities. So it's uh, pretty, pretty tight in terms of this being a priority. Yeah. Also right. able to advocate for local aid and Chapter 70 funding, so that was very important. So that was a, a good opportunity. Uh, I also wanted to tell the board I am <clears throat> now a f an official municipal representative on the Group Insurance Commission, uh, having been appointed by Governor Baker. So that will give uh, me and through me Arlington a seat at the table in being able to provide a municipal perspective as decisions are being made at the state level for the Group Insurance Commission. So I. Um, while I was uh, in the city, I also had a meeting with uh, Dr. Roberta Herman, who's the new executive, well, not new anymore, but uh, newish new executive director at the Group Insurance Commission. So um, I hope that there is no uh, controversy like there was several months ago for some time uh, <laughs> at the Group Insurance be. Commission. But, um, <laughs> but still, uh, I'm honored to be there, and I think it'll provide benefit to Arlington. How, how uh, big is that group? I think there's 17 members awesome. on the commission. That's excellent. It's labor management, uh, health economists, healthcare, so it's sort of a wide range, uh, wide ranging group. And then the last piece is a, li a little bit of fun. Uh, the Arlington Fire Department for the second year in a row is putting together its uh, truck pull contest to raise money for the Relay for Life, uh, where you actually, they tie a rope up to one of the fire engines up in the parking lot at St. Camillus, and teams of uh, up to, I think up to 15 people try to see who can pull the truck over the finish line, uh, as, who, who can do it fastest. So uh, at the urging of Assistant Town Manager Jim Feeney, we're uh -oh. putting together a general government team <laughs> to take on, I think, two firefighter-based team, uh, I think one police team, uh, and we're going to call the uh, general government team, which will have uh, some department heads, some folks from DPW, we're going to call the team Team Dead Weight. Uh, but we're going <laughs> to, we, we, we are, we are, we are, we are, please. We are primed, we are primed and ready uh, to, to take on police and fire, but I think it'll be a great event, it's for a good cause, and it's a Saturday, let me get you the right date. Saturday, April. Saturday, April 28th at 10 a.m. Uh, in the St. Camille's parking lot. So if you want to come down and cheer for everybody, <laughs> you'd be more than welcome. We're going to have some special workers coming to you. It's just for us. Excellent. Excellent. That's all I have. Thank you very much, Mr. Manager. Mr. Quirley. Yeah, first I'd like to know when are the tryouts for the deadweight team? Uh, so am I available? I, I just, can I try? It's all I'm asking. So there's so many guys from DPW signing up that Jim Feeney had to break it to me today that he might cut me from the team. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, sounds like a great event. Uh, oh, man. That's okay. I know. I'll be the coach. I'll be the coach. Yeah. We'll get you a whistle. Yeah, exactly. So uh, just a couple of things. Uh, today we were able to welcome back Marie Kripelka. Hi, Marie. And we know Hi, you're watching at home. Uh, a little earlier than the doctors want. What's new <laughs> What's for new? Marie, yeah. right? Uh, but uh, she's back and she's doing well. 
And we say goodbye to Clarissa in terms of in this seat, although those of us who have had the pleasure of working with her for years and will for years to come in other capacities, uh, it's been a pleasure to serve Thank with you, you again. Always a pleasure yeah. to work with you, Kevin. And I just want to remind everybody that we do have an election coming up on Saturday, April 7th. This Wednesday night uh, at uh, Town Hall, we do have candidates night, I think at 7 p.m. Uh, 7, 7.30 to meet candidates and town meeting members at 8 o'clock for the uh, town wide. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to save you from having to do that. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Just to echo Mr. Gurley Kevin's remarks about my Missy Rue, who I will be missing once again. Um, and I really do appreciate you uh, coming into this. It really was such a seamless transition, as well as um, I appreciated you on the CDBG subcommittee, um, you know, along with Mr. Dunn and, and kind of coming up and revamping that a little bit. Um, I'm happy for you going back to private citizenship. Mm, thank you. I still know the best times to call you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> sure And the very last thing is, um, who knows, never say never, we might see you again in the future in some other capacity. So, but I really, I really love that you have to see me every other Monday night, if not <laughs> consecutive. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Uh, I definitely also am gonna have really enjoyed, uh, I, I think of it as a reprise. And it's like, you know, it's like you get like the, the beautiful music of working with Clarissa and then you just get like a, you know, a few notes of it when it comes back. And uh, thank you for filling in. It's been very helpful. Well, that's very nice. I, Ms. Rowe? I don't have new business. Oh, I have a very important election coming up. Um, I have a contested town meeting seat Ooh. in Precinct 4, so Ooh. I will be looking for votes. Um, but I really, the, coming back here has been it's sort of like riding a bicycle, not a green one, but um, it's been pretty, the work is just the way it always was. And it's a pleasure to be working with everybody in this room again. Joe for much. the first time, but yeah. everybody else. Thank you very much. Yeah, it? it's, I've, I've enjoyed myself. But I, I'm ready to go back to, pri, pri, to sit in the, in the back of town meeting the way I always do. I don't like sitting in the front. I know, that's like a penalty. There you go. <laughs> very so good. thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll just echo my colleagues in saying th thank you very much for stepping up. I mean, at, at, um, in our time of need, um, and it's certainly been great to, to finally be able to serve, serve with you. And I, I hope that at this juncture that I'm not saying that it's been great serving with all of you. We'll see what happens on uh, April 7th. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a wonderful six years. And um, I would also just like to say th thank you to my colleagues for um, uh, allowing me the privilege of, of, of serving this, this seat for this year. I've, I've uh, really uh, enjoyed it. It's been t exhausting by the end, <laughs> limping across the finish line, but thank you for that as well. And that is all of my new business. Move um, to adjourn. Uh, we actually have an executive session on the uh, No, we, we don't have to go. We, we, all, we always have it on, but we, don't, we have nothing to go in on. We have nothing, we, we, okay. No, no, I'm sorry. We, we, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. We do have something on the executive session. It's very, very brief, but we oh. do have to do it. We do? Okay. Yes. I, uh, do, we, do we need to... Uh, uh, is it related to we need to, to come minutes? out on a public vote? We need to go into executive session and we can adjourn an executive session. Okay. Can I, is it related to, to minutes of a meeting? Yes. We were told we're not supposed to, it's that the minutes are not ready. These are drafts. By the office? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're not going in to vote these, right? We're tabling it. That's what we were told. By somebody who's talking to the Should we go into executive session for this discussion? Okay, I, I, no, that's, that's I, I, I was not aware of that. Um, so I will. Um, I would suggest that we go into executive session very, very briefly, and if it's for the purpose of saying that we're not ready to approve right. these minutes, that's fine. Okay, okay. so I, I would ask for a motion um, to enter executive session so for moved. the purpose to review the executive session minutes of February 26, 2018, exiting only for the purposes of adjournment. Second. Roll call. Okay. So roll call. You take the roll call. You have to ask each of us. Ashley. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Dunn? Yes. Clarissa Rowe? Yes. Chairman Joseph Kiro? Yes. Diane Mahan? Yes. Kevin Greeley? Yes. Okay, we are now in executive session ACMI. If you could please signal us when we are off the air. Thank you.